Hello, I'm Matthew McCullough, a trainer with Gradleware. I'd like to teach you about the Gradle wrapper today, a feature that makes it extremely easy to get Gradle running on a machine that may not have it, or to use a very precise version on a box that already does have Gradle. This feature is a core feature, but first and foremost, you're going to ask, why would I use it? And what am I wrapping? Well, in fact, the answer to that is just a few quick things, and they're in the really title of this entire talk. You can wrap Gradle runs of a build or any other task that you set up such that a machine that does not possess Gradle retrieves it, unpacks it, and then uses it for the build. This is a vast contrast and a positive one compared to most other build tools and their requirements for getting it set up manually. Second, you can use on a box that already does have Gradle a very precise version. And you heard me say that a minute ago, but I'd like to ground it in something that's very important even to the Gradle team. What about building Gradle? Gradle uses Gradle to build Gradle. You can imagine that we have very strict requirements over the version of Gradle that builds Gradle for compatibility reasons, for bug fix reasons, and for generally just knowing what we're building with so that we can trust the output of the unit tests and integration tests. I imagine the same might be true with your build. There will be changes to Gradle over time, so it would be nice to have a very precise definition of the tool itself. This is achieved in a very simple way and the Gradle wrapper is well documented up on the Gradleware website. I've got the URL if you'd like to view that entire page, but I'm going to give you enough to get going with it right here in this talk. It turns out to be quite simple. We begin by adding the wrapper to the build script. Yes, we're actually putting a task into our build script that says it is wrapper enabled. We do this by typing into our build file, like build.gradle, a little task, you can name it anything you like, but wrapper tends to be the convention, that is of type wrapper, and at the end of the webcast, I'll show you where that documentation for that task type is. You set the Gradle version as a property right here. That's our precision, that's our property, in which we're specifying the version that we'd like downloaded. By default, the download comes from the Gradleware website, but you can choose an internal distribution URL, and I'll point you at the config to do that at the end of the talk. That little set of three lines is the important key to have in place and saved before we do our next step. The next step is to generate the wrapper files. The wrapper files are actually something that you will check into version control. This is possibly surprising because most of the time you avoid checking in anything other than the build script to most source code projects. However, after running Gradle wrapper, notice Gradle wrapper, we have to have an install to bootstrap it on the same dev machine. The wrapper's successful result in this particular case is a set of files that I'd like to show you. Let's use the tree command to quickly list those out. Here's the directory for this extremely simple Gradle project that is checked into the Gradle O'Reilly Book Examples repo at GitHub. And these are the files that were generated by that wrapper run that we just executed. They include a Gradle directory, a wrapper subdirectory, a very small bootstrapping jar, a set of properties that goes along with that jar that you can inspect, a shell script, as in bash, zshell, etc. that has no file extension called Gradle W and a Windows specific extension .bat for its equivalent script Gradle W or Gradle W .bat. With those files in place now we get to the useful part the part that's most permanent. We use it. Using it is extremely simple. There's almost nothing to teach here because you simply use Gradle W instead of the Gradle command. Gradle W are those two shell scripts that we saw just checked in, one for Unix, POSIX platforms, the other for Windows. So this might be Gradle W.bat. And your build has all the same targets, the same features, and the same behavior that it would with traditional Gradle. Only difference? 
you're using a precise version of Gradle. It was downloaded if necessary, literally, no tooling, no Gradle tooling needed to type Gradle W. It will do all the bootstrapping it needs to make that build successful. The key to remember is Gradle W versus Gradle. There's going to be some interesting stuff in 2012 that blends these two things together and makes this even more easy to implement. This is really a point that a lot of people refer to to show Gradle's simplicity over other build tools, the ability to bootstrap it with such ease. There are a number of other detailed options that, for the sake of efficiency, we won't cover in this basic screencast, but I do want to point you at. These include things like choosing where the zip will be put on the local disk. Now, that's something that could be useful, especially if you have certain space constraints on certain volumes. The other piece that I find interesting and often configure is that you can choose where that distribution is unpacked. Notice the difference between the two. The one is the compressed zip that's downloaded from the Gridleware website by default. The second one is where it expands this so that it actually has the Gradle tooling that it can put on the path temporarily. The last that really encompasses the activity of the first two is that you can choose where this is retrieved and for extremely locked down organizations this could be some tool distribution server that you have inside your firewall rather than a public reach for Gradleware. It might also just be bandwidth efficient if you have a lot of build machines and a lot of developers trying to pull down this 30, 40, 50 meg archive. The detailed properties that can be set are fully called out in the wrapper task documentation. If you head over to the Gradleware website, URL given on the bottom, you'll find that you can see everything from those source and destinations that I just mentioned, where it's retrieved from, but even more specific things like the name of the jar file to write when you're creating the Gradle wrapper and other things about the generation process. Not as often customized, but cool that those are still exposed as properties. That, in a nutshell, has been the Gradle wrapper. And this is a full tour of this feature from the basic use case all the way up to actually putting it into practice of running Gradle W. And it really is that simple, and I highly suggest that most builds investigate putting this into their script and into their process. That precision that it gives you of the version of Gradle running really isolates you from being able to experiment, of course, running Gradle, and having the precision on the build server running Gradle W. A nice combination. This is Matthew McCullough, and thanks for your attention for these few moments of time.